Um, when we talked to Bill Callahan the other day, he mentioned uh, how you kind of, you know, reached right out right away to Jedrick Wills and to Nick Harris. Uh, you know, just wondering, why did you think that was so important to do, maybe especially in this virtual climate? And, um, you know, some people might not do that when, you, when uh, one of those people is, you know, kind of being groomed at your position for down the road. So what was your thinking behind that? Uh, I mean, I think now uh, I I was lucky enough coming into this league uh, to join a room with a lot of uh, really great guys, a lot of older guys who kind of took the young guys under their wings uh, and kind of showed them the ropes and taught them how to be pros. Uh, and I've now entered the part of, of my career that they were at then um, where that's that's kind of my role. And, and my role is to welcome guys into the room and, and make sure they're comfortable and make sure they know that they have you know, older guys that are looking out for them and, and will be an asset for them and will uh, help them with, our, with whatever they need. So uh, I think I want to make sure that first I congratulate them. It's a, it's a big day uh, to be drafted and make sure they understood how, how big of an accomplishment that was. Uh, and then just make myself available if they ever need anything. Uh, obviously, it's a, a weird time with everything being virtual. So it's not that normal uh, move from college to the pros where there's still a lot of gray area and you're not really sure what you should or shouldn't be doing at this point. Uh, so just make myself available to them. And just Nick, just quick follow up. You know, you know, Nick, I mean, will you do everything in your power to take him under your wing, show him uh, everything he needs to know about the center position? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always there to answer questions. I, I've been doing that for, for years now when anybody has has questions about, you know, the way I see the game or, or the way I play. Uh, I'm always available to answer questions for that stuff. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Mary Kay. Next, we'll go to Nate Ulrich. Nate, your line is open. Hey, JC. Uh, congratulations on the marriage and the presidency. <laughs> Thank you. Big off season for you, obviously. Yeah. Um, Getting into your role as president, obviously, um, with everything that's going on, what is your view right now of what needs to kind of happen for, uh, you know, the players uh, to feel comfortable with returning to work, um, you know, other than the, the virtual program that you guys have been uh, engaging in? And, and just do you have, I mean, I know it's so hard to predict and everything's fluid and, and and you, it's impossible to predict, but do you have any thoughts on uh, if we're going to be seeing an NFL football season in 2020? Yeah, I mean, our, our priority is always going to be the the health and safety of the players. And, and usually when you say that, you mean, you know, things that happen on the field. Obviously, it kind of takes a, a new meeting uh, with everything going on now where, you know, you, when you talk about the health and safety of the players is you're, you're talking about kind of their – you know, their own personal uh, health. Uh, and that's always going to be the top priority for us. So th there's probably not one, two, five things. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a long list uh, of hurdles we have to get over and things we have to watch and check. And uh, we just continually uh, seek out information to be informed. And, and this virus is constantly changing and the information you're getting is constantly changing. So, um, you know, we, we've stayed really up to date with everything and, and made sure that we're always looking through the lens of how do we keep our, our players safe and, and healthy as well as their families. Thanks, Nate. Our next question will be from Scott Petrick. Hey, JC. Along those lines, do you feel progress is being made? Do you see, you know, light at the end of the tunnel where there can be agreement between the NFLPA and the league on if it's okay to come back for training camp or even mini camp in June? I, I think that's still a ways out. Um, uh, every place hasn't opened up quite yet. Obviously, the the buildings are are just starting to open up for for non football staff. So I, I don't think we're we're there uh, at this point. I, I think we continually just keep looking at at what new information comes out, uh, and in the end, we just got to make good decisions and and safe decisions. And again, this this is constantly changing, and and that's kind of what we continually see. Uh, and now as, as new areas open up and, and more people kind of leave quarantine, we'll, we'll be able to see what's going on and, and we'll get more data, uh, data points for that. Uh, and, and we have the, I guess what you would call an advantage uh, of we still have time before our season is, is projected to start. Uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the other leagues are trying to figure this out right now and, and trying to piece it together, and, and we still have time. So uh, I wouldn't say we're, uh, we're at the point where we need to, to make an agreement and we're going to keep sitting back and making sure we're making the right decisions for our players. Thanks. All right, I appreciate the question, Scott. Next up, Marla. 
Oh, how you doing, JC? Uh, great to see you. Um, the one more quick thing about that, and then I mean, Adam Schefter had something about how they were working on these state-of-the-art masks. I mean, are you following all that, like, you know, on a daily basis, just all those kind of, you know, updates? Yeah, no, I, I think there's no bad idea at this point, and, and you kind of have to think outside the box. Uh, and, and just cause it's an idea doesn't mean things are definitely going to happen, but you, you need to explore it and you need to, to understand it. And that's one thing, uh, with everything that's going on, you have to focus on, uh, fitting football inside of this world of coronavirus, uh, and, and don't get caught up in trying to fit coronavirus inside this world. Uh, and, and there are two different ways of looking at it and, and the way coronavirus is kind of. Uh, changed how every industry is working. You can't expect just to throw football back in and think that the virus is going to, you know, kneel down to almighty football. You have to look through different ways of making sure people stay healthy. Uh, and there's going to be new ideas and, and it's probably going to look a little different this year, making sure people stay healthy. And just one quick thing about the interacting with the new offensive linemen. Are you, are you, you know, doing it by FaceTime or Zoom? Or I'm just wondering... And, you know, have you learned anything about these guys yet? Yeah, so this is their first week in the meetings with us. Uh, so we have our, our Zoom meetings as an offensive line. Um, but, but a lot of it, it's, it's different now. This, I mean, this will be my first year going through a, a virtual program. And, and usually you have those times one-on-one -on -one in the facility where you have a little downtime. You can get to know guys. Uh, and you just don't have that now. Uh, so a lot of it's getting used to it, obviously, there. You know, they've been going straight now through rookie mini camp this weekend and now into this week. Uh, and a lot of it is just being there for when they need something, when they when they have a question um, and letting them kind of get their feet on themselves uh, as they kind of just jump and get thrown right into this um, this virtual offseason. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Marla. Tom Withers, your line is open. Thanks, Rob. A belated happy birthday to you. Uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. JC, good to see you, man. Thanks for the time. Hey, um, I'd like to circle back on the masks for a second. Have you thought about that possibility? And have you seen any of those prototypes that they're talking about? Haven't seen any of the prototypes. Uh, I've, I've obviously heard about it. Um, but again, I, I think you explore every idea possible. Uh, and and you, you try to come up with new, unique ideas uh, in the emphasis of player safety and making sure we kind of, um, you know, are just really thoughtful and how we're going to uh, be able to do this if we can. Uh, yeah, I know it's some other leagues, the NBA in particular, they're talking about guys who potentially have or already have pre-existing medical conditions and what kind of concern that would be. Is that something that you guys have talked through? Is that, you know, one of the many things of, of all the things that we've got to talk to talk through about all of this? Absolutely. No, we, we've got guys, obviously, um, you know, the emphasis is always on the elderly population uh, and the, the effects of the virus. But uh, there, there are a lot of people with underlying conditions inside our league and, and people see kind of professional athletes as these kind of invincible robots uh, where they're just kind of always in, in the best shape and, and there's no kind of uh, chink in their armor. Um, but, but that's, that's not really the, the case. There are a lot of guys with underlying conditions and, uh, and, and problems that, that we have to look out for. And, um, you know, that, that's something we're always trying to keep top of mind. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Tom. Zach Jackson, you have the next question. Hey, JC, I'm just curious uh, about the presidency. Um, you know, your background, were you like middle school student council president or anything? Um, you know, a year ago, if we'd asked you, is this something you're going to do? Would you, would you have said, you know, maybe to that? Uh, I was, uh, not middle school, uh, council president. Uh, we'll, we'll dispel that right away. Uh, was not, uh, was not an elected official in, in high school either. Um, but, uh, I've always kind of wanted to get more involved. Obviously I studied it in, in, in college. So I had a background in it. And as I become more, um, just more comfortable, uh, with kind of, my day job uh, of being a professional football player uh, and kind of what it takes to prepare and, uh, and be ready and, and the time it takes. Uh, as I've gotten older, I've wanted to get more and more involved, especially coming from that background and being interested in that in college. Uh, I, I probably uh, officially made the decision that I was going to run for president right after the season. Um, uh, and then you know, put, put a lot of time in and researching and, and making sure I knew all about the, the topics and the issues. And then 
uh, had the election down at our uh, at our rep meetings. You have to give a you know five to ten minute speech. Then you go around to five or six rooms, and you got twenty minutes of question and answers uh, with different teams in each room, uh, and then they vote. So it, it was honestly a really cool experience. Uh, it's an honor to be elected by your peers for for anything, but th- this is a role that I'm passionate about, uh, and and just being able to help you know the current players and, and look out for them as well as the guys that are going to come after us and the guys that came before us is um, something I'm really interested in. Okay, thank you, Zach. The next question will be from Tony Grossi. Tony, take it away. Hey, JC. Uh, Major League Baseball seems to be going through quite a tug of war over loss of revenue versus loss of salary. Uh, If the NFL were to have to shorten the season, uh, do you envision a similar tug of war going on with NFL players? I mean, there'll there'll have to be a conversation and negotiations over it. Uh, it's, It's laid out. Uh, in our in our CBA, um, so that that'll be something we'll have to come to when it gets there. I, I still think there's there's a long time out. Um, I mean, we see what the world looked like two and a half months ago, uh, and and how much has changed in two and a half months. And and to look to say we still have kind of two months, two and a half months until um, we kind of have to have these things laid out. So uh, there, there's still a lot of time, and a lot of things can change, and uh, and we just have to follow it and make sure we're always having the conversations and be ready for whenever that conversation has to happen. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Tony. Uh, we have three hands lined up right now. We'll take these three and we'll close out. So we'll go to Nate, Daryl, Mary Kay, and Scott. We'll add one more. So Nate, your line is now open. I believe you need to hit unmute on your end, however. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Um, JC, can you say what your level of optimism is about a season being played? And have you given any thought to, even if you guys are out there, what, what it could look like in the stands, you know, uh, and what that might mean as a player. Um, you know, you're used to playing in front of these big, you know, stadiums full of fans. What, what have you thought about any of that? Uh, I, I wouldn't say uh, I can put a percentage on it or, or a level. Uh, I've really tried to live in kind of two week increments uh, and, and kind of make sure and, and getting the virtual offseason negotiations done uh, and a good plan in place has been has been really important for us. That way we've kind of got uh, a plan set out for all of our players up through June 26th. So we've got a lot of guys, all those questions have been answered and guys know what they have to do and, and, and kind of what their job looks like on a day to day basis through then. Uh, so, so that's kind of been good just to get that, that done and out of the way and, and give everybody a little peace of mind. And then obviously there'll be another, there'll be another step, uh, in, in trying to figure out, uh, the season and training camp and all that. Um, so, so those still have to have to come about. And like I said, I, I've been trying to live in kind of two week increments, uh, because the information is ever changing and ever evolving. And, and that's the thing about this disease. It's a, it's a novel emerging disease. Uh, and that means it's constantly changing and it's, you know, brand new and, and we're continuing to learn about it. Uh, so you can't really look that far ahead because a lot of new information information can come out and there's really no reason to live in a a lot of different hypotheticals uh, or else I feel like you kind of get paralyzed in those hypotheticals where you keep going down different rabbit holes uh, and and you kind of just lose track of of the now. So I've I've been trying to live in kind of two-week increments. Okay, thank you for that one, Nate. Daryl Ryder, your line should be open momentarily. You could try hitting unmute on your side. Thank you. Hey, JC, um, as NFLPA uh, president, I'm curious, what in your estimation are some of the things that the NFLPA is looking for from a safety perspective that you guys are going to be requesting or looking for before players can get back in the facilities and return to the practice field with all this going on? Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's a lot of things. Obviously, like we talked about a few questions ago, we have, we have guys with pre-existing conditions uh, obviously testing is going to have to be really important to this. Um, th- th- there just needs to be a plan and, and there are a lot of questions that have to be answered. And anytime you kind of come up with an answer, uh, like five or six questions pop up just from that answer. So it's kind of an ever evolving conversation. Uh, and, and there's really, you know, not just a, a short list of, we need these five things, the entire life. Um, this is a contact disease and we play a contact sport. So uh, the way this thing passes along is through contact and that's what we do for a living. And the way we interact with each other at the facility, at practice, weightlifting, uh, at, the, at the meal room, 
It is a shoulder to shoulder, um, standing by each other, passing things around. Um, so there is a long list of, of ideas we need to come up with on how to make this environment safe for us. Uh, and that's why it's, it's going to be a, um, you know, a, a lot of thinking involved in that. And that's why we have, we have conversations and calls and, um, you know, we're looking at that every day, but, but that's kind of the issues we're facing is this is a contact disease and we play a contact sport. Where are those conversations at? How in depth have you guys been able to go uh, in trying to clarify some of those points? I think we just continually brainstorm and that's, you know, you, you hear about the mask and, and, and these are all just ideas people come up with trying to think of, you know, how do we mitigate exposure a little bit and how do we, how do we create um, better practices to, to keep people safe and keep people healthy and, and what have we become so used to uh, in our facilities and as football players, you know, what do we have to retrain ourselves um, to have a better idea and a better understanding of how to kind of live in this world of, of coronavirus for the time being. So they are, um, you know, every day the conversation continually goes uh, and you continue to talk and continue to think. Um, but, you know, there, there's really not an end point in sight. You're, people are always coming up with new thoughts of, have, you know, have we thought about this issue that we'll face? And then you try to brainstorm ideas around, you know, how do we, how do we mitigate that? All right, thank you, Daryl. Last two questions will be from Mary Kay and Scott. Mary Kay, you're up now. Uh, okay, so JC, I'm, I'm wondering, I have a couple real quick questions here. Are you getting uh, you know, a fair amount of pushback from, from any players? Like when I hear Roger Goodell uh, say the other day that, that he hopes to have a certain amount of players in, you know, back in the building by June, are you getting a lot of guys being concerned about uh, you know, just exactly how this is supposed to happen, where they're supposed to play a contact sport and do contact practices and contact, you know, weight rooms and all that kind of stuff. How worried are all these guys? Well, that's why we're here. Uh, and that's why that's why we have a union. Uh, and, and we've been we've been trying to keep people up to date. We've been having, you know, almost biweekly calls opened up to all players and their wives um, to allow everybody to ask questions and, and to make sure they feel good about where we're at. Um, and not just in the world of football, but also, also in, in just regular life of, you know, what would you advise me where to the grocery store? What, what should I be thinking of this? You know, I saw this on the news. Is that true? Uh, and we have our, our doctors on there. That way we're just getting everybody the information from, from a source that they can trust. Uh, and that way there, there's not that kind of nervousness or, or worry about what, what's coming down the pipeline. We're, we've been trying to keep everybody up to date uh, and answer any questions that come up and make sure we're kind of over communicating at this point, because this is a kind of a new world and a, and a new issue that, that guys have a lot of questions about. And my second question here is just about, uh, you know, Baker is, is hosting uh, some practices in, in Austin. I'm sure they're doing it on a safe distance basis and things like that. Um, I guess I'm wondering, are there restrictions on those kinds of things, on what they're allowed to do? And then also as offensive linemen, how do you guys, if you're not there, can you kind of develop some bonding or camaraderie with the skill players and the rest of the offensive guys, even though you guys necessarily aren't part of this? Yeah, so we hold um, on, our, on our weekly calls, Thursday has kind of been opened up to be kind of player only. Um, so special teams meets and, and the rest of the guys who aren't on special teams can kind of sit in a Zoom call and, and just do what you would have done if you were sitting in a locker room and, and talk and chat. And we'll go over plays and Baker will run us through different things and we'll talk through our calls and, and do all that. But a lot of that's kind of just a chance to get to know each other and, and see each other's personalities. And we have a lot of new additions. Uh, and that'll be something that will, again, be different, just like the, the rookies, the interactions with rookies are a little different this year than, than previous years. But, but trying to find ways just to get to know people as, as human beings and, you know, what their family's like, you know, how are they doing, where they live in, um, all that stuff is important. So, so we've kind of got that built into our program, um, allowing kind of the players to take the lead and, and go through plays as well as just, you know, be guys and be guys in a locker room, but just virtually. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mary Kay. And for our last question, we'll go to Scott Patrick. Scott, you can close us out. Oh, great. Um, JC, you know, we talk about all these scenarios you're going through in your head. Have you come to a point or is the NFLPA come to a point where you know that there's going to be some risk that the players are going to have to take on that it's not going to be 100% safe when, if and when you guys return? Well, I mean, there's, there's a level of risk of, of everything. I mean, you're facing a level of risk uh, right now going to the grocery store. There, there's always going to be a level of exposure 
um, that people are going to face in this. So that the, the, I don't think we'll ever get to a point where there's no risk of exposure. Um, again, coming in contact with other people is a, a risk of exposure. So um, that that's never going to be down to zero. Our job is to try to, to get that to as close to zero as possible. Uh, and that's why you kind of have to look at everything uh, in, in every little thing that you can, you know, find a little dip and, and, and fix one issue that just decreases the level of exposure you'll, you'll face. So that, that's why there's the conversations are so long and there's so many ideas um, and thoughts and, and kind of reevaluations of, you know, do we have to have to do this? Does, you know, who has to be present? Everything is, is being talked about. Um, so again, just anytime you leave your house at this point, you, you've accepted a level of exposure uh, and then it's trying just to, to mitigate that as much as possible. And can I squeeze in one quick football one? We haven't asked you about your reaction to your two new tackles that you picked up in the off season. Yeah. Um, Jedrick's been great. Uh, seems like a really bright kid. Um, seems to just be excited to work. Um, I've spoken a bunch to Jack. Uh, it, it's nice to have, you know, uh, another veteran in the room who's, who's been extremely experienced one, um, have a lot of uh, individual success and, and he's been a great addition to of, of just uh, being able to step in and, and pick up the system. I think he's kind of built for it. Uh, and he's been a great guy too, just to, to put in the room and another great personality and, and kind of fits right in. 